Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to look at inner classes in Java. So I've created a uh, basic uh, a class in Eclipse that has a main method. And I'm going to create a new class here. And we're going to give this new class some inner classes. So I'm going to right click my package here and go to new class. And I'll call this class robot just to have some kind of an, an example to work with. Click finish. I don't want the main method in it actually. And I'm going to give robot some instance data and just to, just to, again as just as an example I'm going to give it a pro, uh, private private static no not private not static sorry private int ID that'll do. So every robot has an ID and I'm also going to implement a constructor so that we can set the ID. And to do that, I'm going to right click and go to source and generate constructor using fields, tick ID and click OK. So I could have just typed this myself, but that was quicker. I'll get rid of super here because that's not, call to super is not needed. So the constructor just takes an ID and sets this private field using the ID passed in. So now, of course, we can create robots uh, already. Let's give this one more method, actually. Let's give it a public uh, void start method. And in start, I'll just put a sys out. And I'll say starting robot plus ID there. So now I can use that by going to my main method here and creating a robot set that equal to a new robot uh, I'll pass it the ID 7 and then click do robot.start like that okay so that's all pretty straightforward starting robot 7 now let's take a look at inner classes so there's uh, there's three main uh, kind of cases here that I can think of. We've, we've already looked at anonymous classes in this series of tutorials and anonymous classes are a kind of inner class. We're going to look at three more cases here. So uh, in Java you can declare classes actually pretty well anywhere and we've seen in previous tutorials that you could declare a class here or here. The only rule is that you can only have one public top level class in each file and the name of it's got to match the name of the file. So this is robot in robot.java. But I can create a, I can declare a class within the robot class. And let's look first at non-static inner classes or nested classes they're also called. So I can declare a class here, I can say class, let's say brain, like this. And um, this class will now have access to uh, the instance data of the robot class. So let's give this maybe one method, public void think. So the brain thinks and we could have a sys out in here and say robot uh, plus id plus is thinking. So um, I'm accessing here, I, I, I could give class instance data itself, but the point I'm trying to make is that I'm accessing non-static, uh, I'm accessing instance data of the outer robot class here within this inner class. And then I could do stuff like in my start method of robot, I could say, for example, brain brain equals new brain and brain dot not Brian, that's my brother's name actually, brain.think. Now if I run this, let's go to app.java and run it, um, it says robot7 is thinking. So um, this, this is a nested class or a, uh, an inner class and classes like this, what they're, what they're probably most often used for is just logically grouping bits of outer classes like here the robot might be made up of a it might have a brain and legs and a heart and so on I don't know about heart but different parts of it anyway and um, 
we can we can group those different parts if we want to using inner classes and I can I can use the access modifiers like this probably should be private and that would work just fine now I, actually you can also I'm going to show you something here that's a little bit weird but uh, if you've understood what I'm saying so far basically that's that's the end of it really and in fact you can find uh, a really good example of using an inner class if you look at in in this series of tutorials I've got a um, I've got a video on implementing the iterable interface in collections and if you're watching this on YouTube you can find that by going to uh, the cave of programming channel and looking for my collections videos if you're watching on Udemy or somewhere else um, I think on udemy.com I've incorporated the collections videos as part of Java for Beginners and you can find the link to the Udemy course by going to www.caveofprogramming.com but in under the collections uh, section of this series I've got a video on implementing iterable and that uses a inner class like this to implement an iterator which then can iterate through the data of the enclosing class the, the instance data of the enclosing class and that's a classic example of this and if you want to test your skills with this you could try implementing the iterable interface in Java maybe after watching that video now you might wonder if you can create separate classes of this brain here uh, from outside the robot class and the answer is yes but I've, I don't think I've ever seen anyone really do that the most common it is common to use inner classes like this outside of the class that, it, that they are declared in but then usually you'll have a method that would create a instance of your inner class and return it and you can see that if you implement iterable for example there is a, another weird syntax that I'm just going to show you for the sake of completeness here which is that if we were to make this public like that in app.java here we've got an instance of robot here and we could in fact do this we could say robot.brain so robot.brain is the type here uh, we've got robot with the inner class brain let's, let's call this variable brain equals and, we, and now we need an instance of the robot class robot dot, and we say robot.new uh, brain I think I've got that right and um, I've never actually seen anyone do this so it's you don't really I wouldn't really worry about it I just wanted to show you for completeness and then we can use this brain outside of robot so I click run and it says robot 7 is thinking again now once again you'll notice that when you create an instance of robot you do not automatically create an instance of the inner classes you have to do it explicitly somewhere and that's pretty much always done within the class itself within some method but you can as you can see do it outside the class with this weird syntax here um, but I've just never seen anyone actually do that and I don't really know why you'd need to do it and it, it's much more common to make the um, inner classes like private or just not give an access specifier in which case they'll default to I guess package level access so this is only going to work um, if the brain was declared uh, public so let's save that um, so yeah so that's that's inner classes and they're, they're normally used like this within the enclosing class and you might have a method that returns for example brain in this case this could return brain that would also be pretty typical now a second client kind of inner class are static inner classes which are pretty simple actually so we could have here for example uh, let's say battery we could have a a static static class battery like that brackets in and that could have a method let's say public void charge that charges the battery and let's just say in here whoops get rid of that I don't want that and that should be um, oh, I do want that yeah there we go okay so public void charge and let's just put this out in here and just say battery charging 
Now, because this is static, we can't refer to this ID. And by all means, type this code out for yourself and, and try it out and check that that is the case. But I could not do, for example, plus ID here. That would give me an error unless I were to declare ID static. And a static in a class can access static instance variables of um, the enclosing outer class. But what you usually use static in a class is for are uh, it's just are uh, it's just a way of grouping uh, classes together. So let's say in this case you've got robots, and um, they can have interchangeable batteries. So you might want to create a robot battery outside of this class, and then pass it to whatever robots need that charged battery. So we could do here outside um, of the robot class, we could say robot.battery battery equals new robot.battery. And this syntax, unlike this syntax, this syntax is actually pretty typical and very common in Java, or pretty, pretty common. And then we can say battery.charge. And then let's run this, and it says battery charging. So non-static inner classes are used where you need to group together some functionality uh, and you need the class to have access to the instance variables of the enclosing outer class. Static inner classes are used, let's make this public to be explicit, static inner classes are used basically where you just want a normal class that um, isn't associated with instances of the enclosing outer class but you want, for some reason, you want to group it with the outer class. So you could have robot.battery, robot.cpu, uh, whatever you like. But the point is it's grouped with robot. And other than that, apart from that, it's really just a normal class. So the static inner classes are like normal classes that just happen to be grouped with other classes. And you use this kind of dot syntax. Now there is, uh, finally, one last thing that I should tell you about, which is that you can declare classes even within methods. And so I could say here, yeah, like class temp, I don't know, maybe like that. And uh, this would have access to ID. So let's give it a method, public void, um, do something like that. And we could say here, sysal ID is plus ID. It, it would also have um, access to stuff we declare in here. So if I say uh, string name equals Robert, Robert the robot, um, we could say here, yeah, sysal um, my name is plus name save that and the error will surely go away what have I done um, oh yeah um, but I forgot this will work but this this has to be final and, and this follows the same rules for um, like anonymous uh, classes that if you have a method in a, an, an anonymous class and we've seen this before it can only refer to local data if it's final but it can refer to instance data absolutely fine. And then, so we haven't got an instance of this class yet, but we could create one by saying temp temp equals new temp, that's creating the instance. And then we can say temp dot do something. And um, when we run this start method, of course, now we are gonna do all this. We're gonna create this um, temp type and declare an instance of it and run the do something method. So I'll run this like this, battery charging. There we go. Um, my name is Robert, all that stuff. So um, again, this is sometimes useful. It's not completely uncommon. Uh, maybe it's most often useful if, if you need an instance of a class to pass to another method. And um, and for some reason you don't want to use an, an anonymous in a class, which is which you could do. Uh, you just want to you just want to you just want a class that you only want to use in this method. 
create instance of it only in this method because you can't refer to this now outside this method and you can't make it private or public or protected or anything either because uh, the scope of this type as well as these of course the variables is between these brackets here it's scoped to this method so that's inner classes in Java this is actually it's actually relatively simple and if it seems confusing that's just because you haven't practiced it and I'd, I'd recommend typing out some code and trying to think of some little scenario yourself and create um, create uh, a class of each different type the nested class like this the static in a class like this and a kind of I'm not sure what to call this but kind of a local class as well and um, you'll soon get the hang of it and if you want some advanced practice try implementing iterable in Java and you can watch my video on that as I said before that's it for this tutorial and uh, there's going to be more tutorials in this course of course uh, course of course <laughs> there'll be more tutorials in this course certainly um, and I plan to tackle enum and uh, serialization and stuff like that so stay tuned and you can always um, find out what uh, my latest videos are by going to uh, www.caveofprogramming.com and uh, you'll find all my latest stuff on there so that's it for this time and until next time happy coding <laughs>